So the problem with showing you snorkeling and anti-snorkeling in a single structure is that there are too many fluctuations and there might just be one or two residues that exhibit that property. The advantage of trying to find a numerical measure, such as literally measuring this angle, is that I can create averages, either an average in a molecular simulation or maybe averages of structures. Now, 20 years ago, that wasn't particularly useful because we only had a handful of primary protein structures. Today, we have hundreds, if not thousands. And that means that not only are there enough structures available, the resolution is starting to become so high that we definitely see the side chain snorkeling. And in many cases, we might even see the lipids they interact with. I'll show you this first in a simple simulation. Um, so this is just two examples, a methionine side chain and an arginine side chain. And the exact values here are not important. But you see how there is, in particular for the arginine, there is a clear snorkeling effect. What do I mean by N-terminal and C-terminal? Well, there are two sides to this helix, right? If I put the helix to the membrane, there is the beginning of the helix and there is the end of the helix. And it turns out they're not quite identical. If you look at a helix, and let's say that we go from the N side to the C side, so in the direction of the sequence. If you look at that bond, from the C alpha to the C beta. In general, that bond points just so slightly towards the N terminal. Again, when we first look at it, it might look like it's stretching straight out, but it is pointing a bit backwards. The structure down here, which side is the N terminus? Well, we can see that. Do you see that that bond is pointing that way? So the N terminus here, the start of the chain is at the bottom and this helix is pointing up. That means that if I now take this lysine that would like to point outwards, if I put this close to the N terminus, well, I'm already pointing a little bit in the right direction after the first bond. So it's going to be easier for the arginine to be located close to the N terminus than it is to put it at the C terminus. Because at the C terminus here, I first the first bond by definition goes a bit in the wrong direction, and then I would have to snorkel in the other direction. And that's one more effect, there will be systematic patterns in the occurrence of amino acids and membrane proteins. We'll look at that in a second, but I need to show you tryptophan too.